So let's jump right into the interview. Uh, Wayne, I, I understand that there are some matters going on these days that are really, really bothering you. And you have some serious concerns that you want to educate my audience and the country about. Um, go for it. Go right ahead. Yeah, um, they're bothering both of us. Well, go well, for it. I'm not going to stop you. Go. Okay. Well, um, first of all, as you know, the LGBTQ, whatever you call that community, they're promoting June as Pride Month, which is disgusting in my book. And But now... They are targeting young kids. I'm talking preschoolers. They started out with Blue's Clues, teaming up with a drag queen, and they were having a pansexual parade. And as a parent, that is very, very disconcerting to me because it's, kids don't understand this stuff anyway. So why put them through this? And also, it isn't right. And um, other things that have been going on. Why don't you jump in? The whole COVID vaccine narrative thing. Telling people, well, if you're not vaccine, you can't go into you know stadiums. You can't go to concerts. Or if you do, they charge you more. They put you in a separate section away from everybody else. And this also whole sanctioning everybody and dividing everybody and telling everybody, well, if you don't get the vaccine, you're a danger, you're a risk, you're this, you're... And speaking of the vaccine... It is sad that families are being split apart because of this. Um, Jesse's family will not even speak to us because we are not getting vaccinated. We both feel God leading us to not get it. And we have done our homework. We've done our research. And um, it's just very troubling. And, um, and the truth is starting to come out that this thing was created on purpose to intentionally cause pain and suffering and harm and, you know, to take away lives. I mean, the truth, if, if you're smart enough to find or if you know what to look for, you will find the truth. And, you know, when you speak the truth, people don't want to hear it. They don't like to understand that, you know, we're not just saying, well, because, you know, we're Christians that we're not going to do this. It has nothing, to, it's part of that, but it, there's a bigger picture involved and that's what people are not, not wanting to see. They're not understanding or they're, they're emotionally blind, I guess, if you want to call that. And, and being ignorant to not see mm -hmm. what's really going on right in front of their own and eyes. And we have seen people who have taken the vaccine, they have become very egotistical, very judgmental. Self-centered. Yeah, self-centered too. And it doesn't help that our so-called president is doing nothing. And also, the uh, anti-Semitism that's going on in this country. Um, you saw the deal with Israel. As Christians, we, um, we support Israel. But now, because of the anti-Semitism going on in this country, people are going against the Jews just because they're a Jew. This is not what God wants. And Obama, uh, one of our former presidents, declared this nation non-Christian. Folks, we need God back in this country. We need him at the realm. And the, the, these people that are so-called leading need to be removed. And there was even a video today I watched earlier with Judge Pirro and some other doctor, and he was even saying, you know, where this thing came out of, you know, Dr. or not Dr. Bill Gates and Fauci. He was saying everybody above Fauci all the way down is compromised. It's compromised. It's all, it's all being paid off. It's all being covered up. And I mean, I used to support the vaccine before when this whole mess started. I used to, but now when I saw the truth, it was like, uh-uh, I'm not supporting that. I will not give them any more advantage. I will not give them any more options to do more research and test us and get the next pandemic going. You know, I'm not going to feed into their powers. No, we're not going to live in fear, basically. And the funny thing is, well, ironically, there are more people that don't support the vaccine than there are that do. 
I can guarantee, I can speak firsthand. Most of my family, in fact, all of it, is against the vaccine. Well, um, on your first point in regards to the, the children's show, um, I, I agree. I agree with you. I think that it, it shows um, a lot of, a lot of, I would say, I would judge it as a lot of, a lot of immaturity and a lot of, a lot of. I can't port- understand why they're doing it. I can see both sides of this. I can see why they're exposing kids to it because you can't shelter them from it or, you know, divide them from it because eventually they are going to see the bigger picture. They are going to be out in the real world and you can't not see it. It's, it's going on around us. You can't ignore it. I mean, so I understand, but at that age, no, kids are still innocent. They don't really understand what that truly means and what that all entails. It may be like 12, 13, 14, 15, Yes, I could say exposing them at that age would be a lot more different than, say, that you know, younger ages are watching like Blue Shoes and those kind of things. You know, one of the things that I read the other night, and I shared this with Jesse, and it, it, it just so disgusted me. And I, although I applaud these parents that are standing up against it, and I think it's Dalton, New York, I think. I don't remember what state it is. But a school was teaching first graders how to masturbate on video. Parents were outraged and stood up. I applaud those parents. And I also applaud these Christian teachers who say, no, we're not going to go into the non-gender thing. A boy is a boy. A girl is a girl. That's how we're going to address them. And here are these schools suspending them just because they are sticking to their own beliefs. What happened to that, folks? It seems like now you don't. I'm not living in fear. I will not live in fear, but I'm not going to bow down to the government that is going contrary to what the word of God says. Agree. Agree. So you're, you're saying, you know, that you saw some video footage of a school system? I didn't in see New video York. footage. I saw a news blurb about it. And, uh, and, and that's another thing. The media has gotten so leftist when they're making people believe that this you know the mm-hmm. asymptomatic thing with covid they can't even prove that that's legit they can't even you know prove that masks are worthwhile using mm-hmm. you know and they're saying well now you can't even go in a store without doing that and i keep telling people you know yes this is not the mark of the beast however it's this the beginning is the testing ground for it to get us ready to do it because they figure if people will just go silently and do what they're told now down the road when it comes time to the mark of the beast they'll do it without question because they're doing this without question it's an indoctrination process this is getting us prepped this is you know people like no that's not true yes it is this is the beginning of the end things are only Mm -hmm. going to get worse from here on out and as far as the media i don't even listen to the mainstream news at all i listen to something and you can for those of you that are on youtube you can look it up um, or um, it's called the Victory Channel. There was also a website called GoVictory.com. Kenneth Copeland started this. And their media is all based on a Christian perspective. They are not being controlled by the government. They are not being controlled by the main media. They are, they are saying things that are right there. And there's no censorship. And big tech is just as bad because big tech, is again being controlled by the left. I I completely agree with both of you. Um, and I, I too have my have my concerns. Um so what is coming? What do you what do you and suspect? I mean, I, of this, course, have my suspicions, what too, but what do you suspect? What this vaccine is prepping us for, and the whole mask thing, like they're saying, when you can't go in a store without being masked okay, up, me, and you can't... I'm going to jump in here. Let me, okay, go ahead. The thing what they're getting us to get ready to do is, the mark of the beast, what it will entail when it does come, um, will be you can't buy anything, or you can't sell anything, you can't go into a store without mark of the beast, you can't... This is all warning and prep, because... They're like I said, they're silencing us. They're getting us ready because they figure if we bribe you enough or we force you enough or we beg and cajole and 
you know, plead and get you to do this and you do it, then we've got you. You're trapped. You're done. Like, you will do what the government says regardless. No questions asked. You know, and they're they're leading us like sheep to the slaughter. That's what they're basically. I'm going to back up here. Um, In the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, it talks about a lot of this stuff and um, the end and there has to be several things that come into play before the mark of the beast, which I won't go into. Yeah, right but now. it's already begun. Yeah, but the mark of the beast is a mark that is placed on the hand and on the forehead. Or either or. Either or, way. thank you. And if you have this mark, which is 666, which is Satan's lucky number, then you, if you have the mark, then you can buy, sell, and do whatever. Which it's already ha- it's already but it's already begun in New York. If you don't have it, then you can't. Now they have already gotten a lot of technology up to this point. They've already started microchipping. They started doing it with animals. They're doing it. They've already done it to people in New York. Yeah. Well. Okay. And also they are, and now they are also trying to microchip newborn babies with this. Figuring, and they're telling the people, "Oh, it's to track them. Oh, it tracks them all right." And a lot of people were doing what they call the magnet challenge after they got the vaccine. I don't know how much truth there is to that, but it seemed pretty legit when I saw a couple of the videos. One of my friend's brothers got it, and he actually was able to show it. And after you get some of them, people are saying, oh, no, there's no chip in the COVID vaccine BS. They're, they're prepping us. They're getting us. And it, like I said, everybody's just. You know, we're all being shunned. It's like, you know, everybody's playing victim or everybody's playing like, you remember how when everybody's saying we were kids, you have cooties, you have this. It's kind of like a big game of that now. And it's the government will say, well, you're still a danger to everybody. You're still risk it. This thing is never, you know, and eventually, yes, this thing will not be a pandemic forever. It will eventually be what's called an endemic, which, you know, God, you know. And we again, don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. you know, but the government wants us to live in fear forever. They want us. And they're like, they're already saying the next pandemic's already been planned out. I'm like, okay, how can you plan something unless you're the creators of it? Like, right. Now, I'm going to switch gears here because we've been talking about the negative sides. But one thing we need to keep in focus and one thing we have to be reminded of, we know that God is going to win. He is still on the throne. We need to keep our eyes fixed on him. Don't bow down to the government and, and because if, if it's contrary to God's word, the Bible does say to submit to authorities. But if it is against God's word, then don't. And like I said, I'm, yes, as much as I am concerned about this, I am also keeping my eyes on Jesus because I know he's going to win. And God's working behind the scenes. All I can say is he better do something quick. Definitely. So what are some um, other concerning or some other serious matters that you both would like to bring up? Because I I, completely agree with you. Jesse, go. Yes. I would say, like, again, with where I stand with my family, again, them not supporting our, you know, they don't like our decision they don't support they don't agree with it them not wanting us around them because they're afraid of what may or may not come and they're afraid if we catch them even though they've had a vaccine they claim they trust science well then they should believe they're safe you know it's just i hate feeling like i'm an outcast now i hate i i've always been a people pleaser i don't like upsetting people i don't like rocking the boat so to speak i don't like you know frustrating anybody and I like to keep people happy, no matter, you know, what that cost may be. And yes, I will always love my family, but they've never let me have my voice. They've never let my sisters or I do that. It's always do it the way we want it. And if we don't, if you don't do it the way we want it, you're shunned, you're an outcast, you don't, you know, fit. And I've always been the outcast there because I'm a special needs person. I have a lot of problems. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've talked about it. I remember both of you been on my channel several times. Jesse, I don't yeah. know you. Wayne, you've been here at least twice before, at least once or twice before. Jesse, you've been here at least once. I mean, I forget bits, but I, I certainly re- remember your story, Jesse. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, a, it's yeah. just hard because I don't like being separated from them. I don't like not seeing my family. And, you know, I, I don't want to put their lives in danger, but I also know we're not a danger to them. 
and it's I can't get that through to them. They're just kind of blindside right now. They can't see reality, mm. so to speak. And it it it's hard for me because it's like I want to reach out. I want to communicate. I want to you know get back on a healthy note. I want to get back on a good page. And I feel more alone than I ever did. Like I feel like the I. The thing can't... is, though, God. One thing I can say about this, though, yes, we are being divided from our families, but it's forcing those people who are against the vaccine to choose, which is more important, your family or serving the Lord. I have, I'm also a people pleaser, as I have mentioned, but on this one, I am choosing, there's a, there was a verse in Joshua that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what Jesse and I are going to do, no matter what people tell us. If we get killed for it, oh well. We know we did it in good cause. And I've told people, this is the way we go out, fine. If not, uh, that's okay, too. Whatever's going to come is going to happen. We can't stop it. You know, yes, the risk of us catching COVID is much lower than it would have been at the beginning of this nightmare. But, again, you can't get people to understand that you'll never get them to accept that. And it's like, you know, I'm starting to learn. I have to accept it. It's like, if my family doesn't want us, fine. You know, my mom's like, she, she doesn't want us coming back, staying with her, visiting because she's afraid of what will happen. It's like, you know, knowing that my own family pretty much has abandoned us and told us to pretty much, you know, stay gone. It's, it hurts and it, you know, emotionally, you know. Emotional, it's a wreck for her. It, it's wrecking me, but I can't force them to change. I can't make them be what I want. And I can't make me be what they want. And, you know. It took me, how many years did it take me to get, to get that through to you? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, I'm still having to relearn a lot of this myself. And but like I said, I'm sticking to my convictions. And as far as the vaccine, I'm going to say what one doctor said. If you feel God leading you to to not do it, then don't. But if you feel him leading you to do it, OK, we're not going to push our views on other people we're just you know we're just saying what we have noticed sure sure and of course this is an this is an opinion podcast it says so right on the channel aaron's opinion so mm -hmm. th that you're you're entitled to it yeah um i mean my opinion is that i completely agree with everything that you guys have already said there's no ounce of disagreement in my mind um for very different reasons uh, you know, I did choose to get the vaccine for myself, uh, but those decisions were because of other, you know, other factors in my own life. But I, I right. certainly, uh, you know, and I already have pre-existing health conditions. I mean, I mean, we, we don't we don't need to get into the, you know, into the. No, meat we and potatoes. don't say what you were doing was wrong. But, just, right. Then, no, no, you know, never said you did. But what I'm, what I'm saying know. is. And again, a lot of it is we don't know what. What is going to come from getting from the pill to get that vaccine? They don't right. even know what the long term effects of it are, and you know they can't even tell anybody. You know, I've heard some people get cerebral palsy from it. Some people get Bell's palsy. Some people, you know, have blood clots, heart attacks, stroke. You know, we've even read that people who take the vaccine will be gone so in two years. People, the vaccine may kill a lot of people, and you know it's already happening. Quite a few people have already died from Moderna and Pfizer. I mean, it's just. It's one horror story after another. And it's like, and when you see the fact and the truth even came out more today, the fact that this thing was done on purpose to do some sort of research to get us ready. It's like, if mother nature didn't create this and if it didn't come, if God didn't want it to happen and they forced it anyway to, you know, test and see what would happen, you know, to get us ready for when the next pandemic hit, I'm like, you can't cause you shouldn't be trying to cause something to happen that's beyond your control anyway. And if it's going to happen, you have to let it happen naturally, not force it and create it because you want to see what's going to happen to people when you don't know what's, you know, and to, to juice up a virus, as they call it, and make this more deadly on purpose is what makes my nerves crawl and makes me sick. It's like the fact that you have no remorse and no yeah. care for what you've done to all these people. They've killed I think the final, the other total the other day was over like just under half a million. I mean, it just, it, it blows my mind. I mean, and the people that are long haulers now for the rest of their lives, I mean, it's, you can't undo that damage. You can't give those families back the, their lives. I mean, it's, 
and there's no responsibility being taken there is no no accountability nothing. nothing they're not being held accountable they're not being you know punished for it or whatever there's just okay because they they have so much money their highest paid people in the government so to speak they can't they're not being touched they're not you know. and speaking of the government as far and, and i'm as being disabled the government does not really care what happens because for instance jessica her insurance because we're married because we're married and because we're disabled and because of your income and um they stopped it and so now i have to get on a, a new basic insurance plan where we have to spend more money out of pocket on my expensive medications and stuff which it's not going to be as much but it'll still be more of a hit than it was already um and, and that's what hurts it's like they don't want people happy they don't want people married i mean you can't live on the income i make you just can't luckily we have my husband's disability and his, his annuity income but without that you know you can't let no people that are on disability it's like what does the government want from us how do they expect us to survive and still pay taxes and pay you know they work for us, not the other way around. And the housing that they put disabled in are just it's trash. It's shambles. It's a joke. And people over in the UK, they're treated better than we are as far as being, I mean, they get um, great housing. They have a support network. They have jobs. It's just sad the way our government, it's not just the disabled, but it's also other um, minority groups, the blacks, the whites. Yes, the whites are a minority. Now, I will say this. I don't have a racist bone in my body. I have never had and I never will. But the way things have been going lately, you can't even say certain words without getting killed. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think that, no, I mean, as far as your point about the UK, mm. well... Um, I don't, in many respects, Wayne, I don't, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I will tell you that I know a lot of people from, from the UK. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they are very open about complaining about their own government there too. Also too, in Canada, I've heard a lot of complaints about Canada. Well, yeah, over over where Princess, what's her name? Queen, what's her name that just lost her husband? Queen, Queen Elizabeth. Elizabeth. They don't have they don't have a democracy like we do. They have and a uh, monarchy. Monarchy, which is a very different bizarre system mm -hmm. to me. But yes, every that's the thing. We disabled as a whole. You're right. We are treated like lower than the scum of the earth. We are treated like you're disabled. You don't fit. You don't fit what society wants. So we're just going to cast you off to the side and act like you don't matter. You don't exist. We're going to give you the lowest amount of money possible to live on and hope to God, you know, you sink or float or whatever. And it's wrong. It's a wonder a lot of these people that are disabled turn to means of income that really isn't right because they're trying to find ways to live. The government doesn't give them a choice. It's like you either find a way or die. Like. It's like, you know, when we found this place, we just moved recently. It took us how many months? Well, what, what, three months? Quite a few, yeah. Yeah, we were looking for a place because of circumstances at our last house. Beyond our control. That were beyond our control. And we were looking and looking and looking. Rent. To rent a house. Between 2000 and 3000 a month. Who can afford that? Who can afford that? Well, Jesse just happened to be looking on Facebook for something else, just entirely out of the blue. This place popped up. And we went, okay, we're going to grab this. Not knowing we would have a lot of repairs, but that's beyond the point. Oh, yeah. We got it repaired now. <laughs> and so, I mean, we got, we got a lot of the major repairs done. We didn't have to pay a dime for it. We just had to pay for a couple of things that we needed. But that was it. So we were lucky to find, we were blessed to find this place. Yeah, and I think that you're, what you're saying, you are, by no means you are alone. Um, 
these are other conversations that I've been having a lot of uh, on my podcast with other blind people who are in uh, similar situations or worse, not to make comparisons, but similar right, situations right. Or, or worse than yours that have said very, very, very similar things. Well, and some um, people even say, hmm? and this is what hurts me. Yeah. Um, that because of the income we make, people say, well, you, you have it easy. You're handed free money from the government you're, or his annuity in case. My parents are like, well, you guys, have, <laughs> you guys make more income than most people do. But they under they don't understand that the income we are getting it had a yes, price. It comes from the government, but we paid a price that most people don't have to pay. We paid with issues that we have to live with for the rest of our lives. We paid with issues that nobody should have to live with. And it's like because of my income, we cannot get help from government assistance programs which it, not, it would be nice if we could at times, but we can't. And that's the sad thing. If the government is basing everything on money and numbers. I mean, when we were trying to find a place, a lot of places wouldn't take us because of our, cr our credit, which we're trying to repair. They would, and even when we tried explaining, they wouldn't take us. All, all it is, all we were was just a number. And that, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I have the old uh, Western values. A man is as good as his word with a handshake. And unfortunately, that's gone out the window. Yeah, it, it, it's really, it's really ridiculous. Um, I, I think a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of blind people are facing uh, housing discrimination. Um, and it's certainly worse than I'm even aware of, because as you guys know, we've talked um, on a personal level, but many, the majority of the people who watch the show here at Aaron's Opinion too, kind of probably know who I am, know a little bit about me, understand that I live with my family, I live with my parents and my brother. So, you know, I, in, in a lot of ways, I have it, I have it easier than other blind people. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's, 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 it's hard, it's hard to compare because, you know, there are things I want. There are challenges that I perceive to be challenges. There are complaints that I have. There are opinions that I have. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, uh, you know, and of course, I'm, I'm younger than both of you. I'm 30. So, you know, for me, certain things, you know, I haven't. Yeah, Jeff is 34. I'll be 47 next week. Yeah, I knew, I knew one of, I thought you both were in your upper 40s. I knew one of you was nope, the nope, upper 40s. Jeff is 34. Jeff is uh, 34 I, and I'll be 47. I, well, cl cleared, cl Glad we glad we cleared the. I'm, I'm glad we cleared the cleared the storm or cleared the clouds. I don't know what the expression is for that. <laughs> glad we, we cleared that one out have, of the way. Yeah. I um I have always taught people like I've told you I look at people from who they are on the inside. Right. We all have challenges, and sometimes instead of just complaining about it, if we are able we can do something about it. And that's one of the reasons why I jumped at the chance when you asked if we could do an episode. Right. Because... And you were, and you were, and you were frustrated and I felt, I felt your frustration and yeah. I, I felt, I felt your emotion. And this is, you know, one of the things that I want to do here at Aaron's opinion right. too. And I mean it. And I know some people, you know, I know you guys. Oh, 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 what Jesse? Go, go ahead. What? Um, internet subscription. I told you about that. Dan Bongino talked about. For twelve ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> but, what's that yeah, about? Um, what's, wait, 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 let's uh, re rewind. Rewind. What's that? What's yeah. that about Bongino? What's that? I know. I know. I know who it is. Dan Bongino. I I have a lot of respect for him, and I also heard about this Express VPN network from other podcasts I've listened to. Yeah. And he and uh, Judge Janine Pirro, she's right on the money. Um. Same with Mark Levine. I listen to a lot of these guys on Apple Podcasts, and I'm in. I am. I'm listening to these, and I'm going, "Hey, I'm in agreement here." <clears throat> and that Express VPN, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's a very private network. It doesn't censor your stuff. It keep uh, basically. It's telling Big Brother to shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna. That's my way of saying it. 
but it uh, it keeps you from it protects your internet, your your videos, your photos, you name it. And uh, the website for that is expressvpn.com. <laughs> And, and Aaron's opinion, too, is not brought to you by ExpressVPN. So sadly, I do not have a promo code for you for, for some <laughs> X percent off. No, we, you, were, you were hoping that I was going to say, and for, and for 15% off for the next 30 days. I know, promo, I know. <laughs> promo code. But I, guys, I have, I have to fill your hearts with sadness and disappointment. I do not. They are not my sponsor. Um, but if <laughs> they, they should be. You you go you go get after you get off the go you go call those Express VPN people. I don't have time to talk to VPNs. I don't know. You go call those people. Talk to them about it. But, <laughs> but yeah, that, but hey, say that there's some tell, tell them that they yeah tell them that there's some podcaster Aaron Richmond Aaron's opinion too. He wants there to you be go. <laughs> I mean I mean you yeah, already did yes, the promo. I have done the promo. Before, and I've been told I make a good salesman. <laughs> Even With though your, I hate sales. Well, but you know what? You know what I love about both of you too, and I mean this from from my heart to yours, Wayne. Yeah. I just I love your annoying and obnoxious and lovable way that you talk, and I just love hearing your accent from that midwestern midwestern accent with your annoying and lovable voice. It's just so so abrasive and so attractive. I'll I'll just listen to anything. I'll basically listen to anything you want to tell me because you do it in such an articulate and beautiful way. And I just, I just, just the, the personality. I mean, even though that we've never met in person, just the, the kindness and the amount that you, that you two care about each other, care about God, care about our country, care about me, even care about podcasts. It just really, it really seeps through. It really, yep, really, I'm really. Put it this way. I'm an American and I'm damn proud of it. <laughs> oh, good. Well, good. Well, good. <clears throat> and hey, folks, share this podcast wherever you want to <laughs> share it. Okay. Well, like like he said, share it. Hey, you know what? I'm I'm not gonna, guys. I'm not gonna tell you, uh, Wayne. All all I can say is, keep an eye on the WhatsApp group. Okay. Something. <laughs> no, no. Seriously, Wayne. 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 Something is gonna happen this Thursday. I secretly know what it is. <laughs> no seriously uh -huh. I'm, I'm not i'm not going to tell you but you need to pay very close attention something is going to occur on thursday that will really really impress you i have to keep it a secret only to make it more amazing you see and where do i find this out at where do you find it out at? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. Just stay. Just keep an eye on the Aaron's. I'll, I'll give you a clue. Keep an okay. eye on the, on the Aaron's Opinion Facebook page. Because something, right. something might be sneaking up on that page around, uh, around this time Thursday night. If something else goes well, if I like the way something else goes, I got a little, I got a little something just around the corner. Okay, we will definitely keep it. Do you have him on Facebook, Jess? Yes. Yeah. Okay. She's, good. Friends. she's she's friends with me on Facebook. So if both of you like Aaron's opinion, the Aaron's opinion page, the page for the show on Facebook, if both of you push the like, you'll see something that will probably happen. I've basically decided whatever it is, it's going to happen tomorrow night or Thursday night. More likely, more likely Thursday. Because I gotta, I gotta make sure that the that the thing occurs. But right. But anyway, anyway, okay, that was about would, that was about the that, that was about the that was about the best that was about the best promo I've ever heard for ExpressVPN, um, or or any or anything else like that. Yeah, no, seriously. You know what? It would just be adorable, Wayne. Send them this episode and say that you want them to contact me and you want me to be sponsored by them. You know, I've, I've, I, that, that would just be, that would just be hysterical. That would just be adorable. Um, yeah, really. <laughs> but no, but I'm, I mean it, do it. Um, um, but, but hey, if I knew how I would. Well, I don't know. You knew, well, you knew the, you knew the commercial pretty well. You know, I thought if you knew the commercial, you knew who was in charge, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you now let's, let's get, let's get back, back into the swing of the podcast. Something a little bit more, a little bit more upbeat, you know. Yeah, um, really. 
Um, I mean, unless you guys want to keep being negative, I mean, we can, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to shy away from that, but what, what I want to know is, so Wayne, you know, you haven't really been uploading much on your podcast yourself. And you, you were saying also in the group that you have some concerns that people are not loving your content. Well, I wish you would just put out more content because I love listening to you when you do put out content. So what's going on over there on the Chime Bear uh, department? Yeah, we're, I'm hoping to start working on it this week. Um, it's just that We've had a lot of um, housework that repairs that need to be done, which are still not quite done. Yeah, the former tenant on this house did a number. Like you're talking five to ten thousand dollars worth We've of damage. Got people coming out the 25th of June. I've got the pest control coming back out the seventh of this month, which is next <laughs> week. So yeah, jeez. So what? The... Here's another thing, guys. If you are going to rent a home, I've been doing this for years. Before you move in, check it out. Which we did. And if anybody is a landlord, do your job. And if you say you're going to get it fixed to the new renters before you move in, get it done. Yeah, because we've been, we had to get out of here for four days and then it still wasn't done. We moved back home and then, you know, it's been one thing after another and there's still issues with the house. They're never fully going to be fixed again. I mean, it's just... Holy moly. Ooh la la. Yeah. So what I mean, I mean, the last tenant just completely, what, just completely trashed the jerk or what? I mean. No, what the it? landlord didn't. The owner that lives in Southern California, the landlord, his brother was supposed to get this house fixed up before we. Oh, we lives two blocks away. Yeah. And he never did any, he never got anything taken care of. So his brother has been getting everything done over the phone from California and calling the right people and setting things back up in motion. And, you know, the guy before he left, he pretty much just, the last time that lived here pretty much destroyed the house. He was a Muslim. And let me tell you, we found a lot of animal bones with teeth. We found a Quran. That got out of here faster than y'all can say butter. We, I mean, it's just doors were pretty much destroyed. So the door, most of the doors in the house had to be replaced. Appliances. All the kitchen appliances had to be replaced. The laundry washer had to be replaced. So it's, it's been crazy, but like I said, I'm hoping to get back in the game. Um, I'm going to probably start working on it this week. Um, I think I know what I'm going to do. I just have to record it and piece it together. I just wish that, because that's what I have to do. Thank Backpack for that. And also, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Backpack is a studio app. I also use a Shure MV88 mic. Yeah, it cost me a couple hundred bucks, but it's well worth it. And is that a mic? Um, I mean, is that a mic like like a gaming headset? Is it like a headset like I have right here, no, Jesse, no. or is it more it's like a? It's actually it's a little mic. You can plug it in if you're using your iPhone to record your podcast. Which you I just don't. plug it in, or actually, yeah, you just plug it in where you plug the cord in, mm -hmm. and the mic's about the size of an egg, and um, very sharp sound, um, and it even has an app that comes with it. Um, I would suggest, uh, I don't know if you know who Christopher Duffley is. Not, not precisely. I mean, I may have heard. He's that. another blind podcaster. He's, uh, um, he's 20 years old, but he was the one that recommended this mic. And I'm glad he did. It paid off. Hmm. Hmm. I see. Well, I mean, could I use, is, is it the type of thing that I could use with, with my iMac right here? I mean, cause I'm on yeah, the iMac. Could. I'm sure you could. Um, I can. I, what I'll do is I'll huh. text you on WhatsApp the link from Amazon and you can check ah, it out. I would love I would love to learn more about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, yeah, and I'll probably do some more of my stuff once I, you know, I've been getting my gaming and craft room going. I've been ordering some other stuff I needed for that and getting that stuff going, working on my diamond art project. So I'll probably do some of my YouTube stuff eventually here again too. Actually, you know what you could do? You could demonstrate some of your diamond That'd duck kits. That'd be a kits. good idea. That'd be a really good idea. If you don't know what diamond duck kits are, tell them what that is. They're, they're, they're what they call diamond paint or diamond dot, like you said. They're little crystals painted with different colors and they come with a picture and a diagram and it says, you know, it's kind of like paint by number, but with plastic little crystals. And, you know, each crystal fits a certain number code and you put them where they fit and they all make different pictures and stuff. Very popular. Yeah, I like doing them. I have quite a few that I've worn from different websites and gotten them from different stores and stuff. 
I've been getting supplies for that, my puzzle stuff. And like I said, a lot more, I'm slowly over time getting some more of my Bluetooth stuff and my other gaming stuff I need still. So I think for now, we'll probably start with the diamond dot. I mean, that keeps her focused. My youngest daughter, I think, is uh, is also into this. Um, and it does keep you focused. <clears throat> Minutes ago. Well, that's excellent. It sounds like something similar. It sounds like something similar to like um, needlepoint, but kind of yeah, yeah, kind of needlepoint slash crafted slash paint by number. It's kind of like the best of all the worlds in one. The best way I can describe it, if you remember the dot to dot coloring books, which it's were like born that, to just us blind people, but it's, it's like kind that, of like that. Three D almost, if you will. Huh. But I mean, a blind person wouldn't be able to do these, but a sighted person, hey. I'm sure, but I'm sure there's versions that are tactile, or I'm sure. These, these little crystals are very tactile. I mean, yeah, they are tactile. You have to know where each one goes, so and follow the numbers. And so, yeah, that's that's the tricky part is trying to find the numbers. But well, how do you tell though? You have to just visually look at a, at a uh, map, kind of like picture, that. The picture is yes. already there, and then the crystals go over each spot, and they form the picture. What is that called? Do, you probably never heard of these sewer writing kits, where you would put this piece of plastic down on a clipboard, you would draw, and I would raise the drawing. It's kind of like it's kind of like that, huh? Huh? I see. So it sounds like a creative art project that has these different pictures. Um, kind of, yeah, and I've got a lighting pad for, for them. i got a couple of lighting pads that I can use to make it so it's easier for me to see because my vision is starting to fail. My hearing is yeah. falling. <laughs> so, but it gives her something to do. She enjoys doing it. Um, and and if there are, you know, if there are, I'm sure there are artists who, li who listen to your podcast. They can get it if they're a little vision or excited. They could get into it too. I mean, like I said, my youngest daughter, who's 17, she's getting into this. Right, sure. And it's, it, I mean, it does. I mean, I've got, you know, a paint by number that I wrote the other day for myself. I've gotten quite a few things. I mean, yeah, I will be adding to the gaming area part of the room too. As time goes on. Yeah, different gaming keyboards and different things. And I, this fall, the new Nintendo Switch Pro is coming out. So I will be getting that. That's going to be out in September, I've heard. So I will be buying that. But like I said, you know, um, I'm telling her to start small. Start with the crafts and go from there. And like I said, what I'm going to start doing is, um, well, I might as well do my pitch. I'm going to be uh, doing some more stories, but I'm going to be basing some of these stories straight out of the Bible. But I'm just going to adapt them a little bit. I'm not going to change any of the words. I love, I love hearing you read the Bible stories. I, I just love that. And I wish you would do it more. I, I really do. I intend to do that. Like I said, I'm going to be doing that. And um, if anybody else has any ideas of stuff that I can work with. Yeah, maybe I'll be doing some other like gaming tutorials or like some uh, Diamond Dot tutorials. There I'll be go. doing quite a few different things. And also, it, sometimes people wonder, where do you get your ideas? Well, believe it or not, I was looking at a first aid app the other night. And I'm looking at it going, I can make a story out of some of this. Hmm. Hmm. So... I mean, just a matter of coming up with the plot. That's the hard part is coming up with the plot. Um, if you listen to my earlier content on my YouTube channel, um, it was hard at first because I was, I was having to pre-record everything. This is before I brought Jesse out here. I had to pre-record it. Well, I still pre-record everything, but I had to literally play with the plot in my head to try to get it just right because I will not use scripts. I flatly refuse to do that. I want it to sound as real as possible. So um, next time, I'm, I'm hoping to do some of the Bible stories. Someone suggested that I do the fairy tales, but I don't think so. Yeah. Someone yes. Was Please. Yes. That would be really cool, man, if you did some adaptive fairy tales. Yeah. I'll have to look. I know I can find Grimm's fairy tales. I have uh, Library of Congress has that, I'm sure. Um. That's why I'll be ordering that book for myself from Walmart next month. Oh, okay. Um, and but like I said, and what I'm gonna do, and I don't care what people what people say, I'm gonna do it the way I see it. If they don't like it, they can skip to the next one. 
Right. Which is, I completely agree, which is why I was um, not really concerned, but I, I, I just want to just want to put my opinion out there that. Well, it is called her, Aaron's opinion. Well, I, I suppose it is. Yes. <laughs> I just I just I just want I just want you to be overly aware. Um, and when you see what will happen, hopefully, God willing, in a couple of days here at Aaron's Opinion 2, you'll see why I say this. Your your numbers don't really matter. Your, your right. subscriber count doesn't really matter. OK, I do it because I, I have fun with it. Right. Which is why you should do it. And people can tell. OK, like yep. I said earlier, I can tell how much you love talking to me, how much you care. You're oh, you're we both do. <laughs> your your kindness your kindness seeps right through to me and i i just i just love it and that's what so i can tell okay so do not so wayne i don't ever want to hear you say on my whatsapp group ever again that you're looking at your metrics you're looking at your your analytics to tell right. you how to produce a video my right. estimation wayne you decide what you produce others like it or not but overall, you will get more people to subscribe when they see that you love what you're doing. And people right. do notice the love. And that's oh, what yeah, really... that's why I'm gonna be adding to what I'm doing too. And you know. Well, see, I've never see seen people... I've never seen any of your content. So I, I hope I hope you will. And I hope that both of you get in get seriously in, into podcasting and get seriously uh, onto onto iTunes. I really... Oh, I intend to. Oh, I, I really intend to down the road. I mean, it, you know, it's, I've seen few of the Amazon halls, Walmart halls. I mean, there's a bunch of ideas I'm coming up with. Yeah. I'm coming up with some too, but, um, so there'll be stuff from me in the future. You can count on that. Yep. And what I'm going to do, cause what I have to try to do is try to get the story in a way to where the audience member is actually filling in the blanks that they're responding back, you know, kind of like a conversation. I just came up with one I could do all about like Asperger's and how to, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. what daily what life. Of sure. Tell Asperger's. Us. Well, the ideas I just thought of for me, for my channel is um, what a daily life for someone with Asperger's looks like from, from their point of view. You can actually even do various video deals and maybe put them together into one. Yeah. I don't know how you do that, but I'm sure you can figure it do out. It. Yeah, please do it. Because as someone who, in all in all honesty, I can, I, I, I for, I'm sure we've talked about it before. If we haven't, we're talking about it now. I consider myself to be. How do I even express it to you, Jess? Um, I, I, I too am kind of Aspergery. I, I definitely have Aspergers. <laughs> Go ahead. No, no, no I don't. What? No, I don't. Okay, F what? I don't. You don't think what? You think what? No. No, I no, I agree. That actually is a good way to call it. Yeah. I don't. People say Asperger's high functioning, low functioning, mid functioning. I don't call it any of that. I don't label it any of that. I just say we we function differently, or we see the world from a. It's kind of yeah. like you know when your window's dirty and you want to spray it with Windex to clean it, but when it's dirty, that's kind of how our life is. We don't see the world as clearly as other people do, or it's clear, but everything is almost at a much higher rate of sound, higher rate of speed. Mm -hmm. Everything like it's almost like the world is going full speed all the time. So you have more. I mean, just just to kind of define it, to kind of paint the picture for the listener, Jesse, you would have more of the your your Aspergers would be more on the sensory side, and I think I, my... yes, I have my hearing is very sensitive, even though it's going. My vision is like when everything's going on around me, it's like my brain just goes into like this yeah. panic Short mode circuit. and like Indeed. I can't even think about what's going on around me. And I just kind of like shut down and kind of when a computer turns itself off because it can't take on anymore. That's kind of like what my brain does. And I see the world kind of from a much different perspective. The way everybody else, a normal, quote, normal person sees the world is not the same way I can function in it. And I don't. I don't fit the right mold, but I don't, I don't see myself as disabled. I say I'm differently abled. I was just going to say the same the world, thing. I just see the world from a different perspective than most people do. I, I feel things much more differently. I, you know, I'm much more sensitive than most people. Yes, that can be good and bad at the same time. I just say it's different. It's not good or bad. It's just indifferent. It's just what it is. It's. 
Yes. And having and being someone who's married to someone with Asperger's, sometimes I wish I could get some help. I mean, sometimes there are days, I mean, <laughs> there's appetite changes. There's there's all sorts of things I have to learn. You know, every day is different to me because some days I'm more hungry than those. Some days I want to eat, some days I don't. Some days I want to do certain things, some days I don't. It's it's a kind of pick and choose disability. It's and you she doesn't choose it. It chooses. Words. It chooses for me. And it's sometimes I don't have control. It's and there are times that like I'm trying to get through to her lovely ass burgers. That uh, sometimes you have to do things a certain way so a blind person can do it. Right. And it's 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 like okay, finding things all stacked up. Okay. I know you don't want me digging, but I have to use my hands. How am I supposed to find something when my eyes don't work? I mean, it's something. It's just something with me. It's when I have something organized, I don't like it messed up. It's just part of my. That's not the Asperger's. That's one of my organizational quirks. I'm, you know, picky about that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to live with it. It's hard. So see, two people with disabilities can get married and live together and work together. It's just a matter of learning which is a constant process how to to work with it right right well that is, and that's something that that i i believe and i i appreciate both of you for for educating the audience about it because i think it's a typically misunderstood type of thing you know so i really do i really do appreciate um, and that's why like i said i'll be doing a video on you know what day daily life is like right with yeah some, so to get so to get so to, so to get back on track to that yes definitely do a video about you know, or, or, or Jesse, do a vlog or do something like right. that. Like, that's what I was going to do, like how I see the world and, you know. A vlog, that's what it's yeah. talking Kind of like what Mindy and Yeah, are doing that's what chat. I mean. That's what I'm going to do. Like how I see the world, kind of like a different perspective, so to speak. And right. you, who knows, you might see yours truly on them too. I've oh. thought about doing vlogs, but eh. I mean, there's quite a few things. Like I said, I'll probably do a crafting vlog. I'll probably do you know, there'll be quite a few things coming, so. Yep. So just uh, keep an eye on our channels, um, and we will see what we can do. Just give, just be patient. That's all I can say. I see. I see. And, um, and have I, Jesse, did, did, did you ever, I forget, did you ever send me your channel? I, I don't know. I don't actually I think so. Know. I can resend it to you, though. Yeah. I know you have mine. I definitely I have yours on, on YouTube. Um, but I prefer to consume content through iTunes. So what what I will say is whatever you guys upload on YouTube, definitely try to podcast it out into the audio. Oh, I do. Because that, that will be very, very I use important. Spreaker. I'm going to try and do too, and that way I can get my- I use Spreaker, and Spreaker it. shares it with different platforms. That's how my podcast appeared on- um, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, you name it. That's how it got out. Right, right. And that's I, what I'll I be see. doing with Find Adventure too. Like, like I said, I will be doing the Asperger stuff, crafting stuff. I may even do some stuff about, you know, certain movies and stuff that I like. And, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, you're anything. killing me. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, don't do the movie. No, no, I'm not going to watch it if you're going to do the movie stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying, those are some of the ideas. Well, yeah, no, get rid of that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand Aaron, don't forget too bad. She's more in the movies than I am. I'm oh, not Lord. Kidding. How many? Oh, God. She has about, what, 20 DVD binders. Oh, God. Full of DVDs. Now, Wayne, she has I'm, Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. I'm, I have I, I'm, I'm praying for you. Binders. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> 20 by oh god wayne well i know that, that's that scar that scares me that scares me i, I see people do much worse I see people yeah well do well i was like saying like you're saying well you know we well you know pandemics can get worse yeah but do we want them to no what why do you need 20 <laughs> by, 20 how much worse do you want to do what are we going to go up 66 binders 73 what <laughs> well hey it was fun trying to move them not uh-huh I mean, uh -huh. I only have seven CD binders. I know where to stop. There, there have been times I've had to kind of help her slam on her brakes, right? 
Yeah, but movies is a fun hobby. <laughs> yes, yes, but, yes, but, but, but here's my excuse. It's a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I see. Of, hey, I have my Legos. I have my Diamond Earth self. Oh, I have my well, movies. I have no, yes, Jessie, she does have Legos. No, Jesse, that's that's totally okay. To- totally fine. I, I would say, you know, with if you want to get into a movie review um, playlist, I mean, there are YouTubers who do it. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm fascinated by it. Personally, movie reviews, I, it, personally, it bores me to tears, but there are some YouTubers who make a living just reviewing movies and books and talking about it. Oh, I've it. heard of them. So, you know, really, um, it, you know, if you really are serious about about that, it's really important to, you know, to do, you know, to do your research about the director, about the film and, and, and you know, all, all of that. Um, so to both of you, I have about another four minutes on, on the recording. Um, I do like to keep very good time. Um, so let's, let's go with, um, I just want to tell both of you, thank you for joining me here on Aaron's Opinion too, as always. Thanks for being part of this wonderful and kind family that we've built at Aaron's Opinion from all over the world. Um, but really, I mean, you know, we really covered a lot. We started really serious. We got some laughs. We had some entertainment there. <laughs> so Wayne, what is your, what are some of your understanding that you have four minutes? I want to give Wayne, I'm going to give you another two minutes and then we'll swing over to Jesse. Wayne, okay. what are your, uh, final remarks that you would like to leave this particular episode with? Go, well, go ahead. I'll try that. Um, I was going to say that you know, despite all the negativity stuff that we first talked about, don't live in fear. Don't let the media try to control you. Do your homework. You know, do your research. Read If you're a Christian like I am, Jesse, read your Bibles. Keep your eyes on Christ and just do what he directs you to do. Stand on your convictions. And Jesse? Um, just to... That- Try not to take the world personally. Try not to take offense too much. And, you know, if people have problems with you, let that be their problem. Don't take the world on your own shoulders and, you know, just enjoy, you know, and because this world is only, you know, for us, it only goes around once, so to speak, if you get my drift. It only, we're only given one shot, one chance, and that's it. Like, live life to the fullest. And enjoy your dogs if you have a dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you, oh, so oh, how many and how many dogs and how many dogs do you do you have? We have one right have now. One she's a black miniature golden doodle. She's about three years old, and she's about sixteen inches tall. She's right now curled up, um, on Jessica's lap. I see. So she's like a little black dog that like will stay a yeah. small yeah. size. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But see. See. she's yeah. emotional therapy for both of us. I mean, if we both are. Out of it, here yeah, comes twice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She just she makes it worth it getting up every yep. day. Yep. Oh, definitely they do. Definitely. So her name her name is Twilight. Yeah. Twilight. Like T W I L A. Named after the singer Christian Twilight singer Twilight Paris. Paris. Oh, Twyla. Oh, that's a yep. be- that's a beautiful name. T W I L A. Right. That's beautiful. That's a really unusual and beautiful name, Twyla. It kind of reminds yep. me of twilight or evening or a beautiful That's what it sunset. Means. Yeah. yeah That's what twilight means. means. It also is named after the gospel singer Twyla Paris. I see. I see. Yeah. That so, that and- is definitely that that is very very interesting for for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um well I mean are you guys planning on getting any like um exotic no, pets right, or crazy pets? Right or now no because one dog is enough for yeah. us to handle plus all the <clears throat> housework and everything else. We don't need any more stuff on our plate. <laughs> I have I have four human kids. Now I have my fur baby. That's enough. I as far see. as kids. Even though we hardly ever see our kids, but still. No, I know, but that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah. But that's... and like I said, Eric Aaron, you become kind of like family to us as well. So I think I think oh. that's one thing I, I like oh. about uh, these WhatsApp groups. Yeah, it's very family. Well, that was so pretty. Wayne. Wayne, thank you, thank you. Okay, yeah. that meant that meant everything to me. Okay, here's You're the family con- to both of us. Here, but here's but here's the, but here's the constructive and all all in great humor. Okay, 
Two minutes ago, I, la I asked you to end with some great words. Okay, you talk about all those things. You could have said that I'm family for two minutes ago. But that, <laughs> you're killing me, man. But the fact that you put it in at the end just, just to get that rise out of me, you know you know how to, you know exactly the way I like to end an episode. Well, of yeah, course. Yeah, you're, you're family to both of us. You yep. are both me on. Well, that's it. As I said, I've told Wayne, I've told Jesse, I'm not going to lie. You guys know it's the truth. Both of you are the kindest some of the kindest people i've met on this planet i mean it and because of that you're always welcome on this show we're basically out of time i'm just going to say this please 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 stay tuned to the facebook page here's opinion you're going to love what's going to happen on thursday probably hopefully god willing <laughs> stay, stay, stay safe out there guys hang in there hang in there god bless you and you're always welcome on aaron's opinion too all well, right thank you for having us thank you for having us look forward to seeing you soon all right take care guys